Atrial fibrillation is a common cardiac arrhythmia which predisposes patients to ischemic stroke. In clinical practice, that risk can be mitigated by placing patients on anticoagulation. Hello, my name is Robert Ward and I'm a clinical cardiology fellow at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I'm happy today to discuss our article entitled Utility of Hasbled and Chads Vast Scores Among Patients with Atrial Fibrillation and Imaging Evidence of Cerebral Amyloid Angiopathy, which will be published in Mayo Clinic Proceedings in October of 2020. Cerebral amyloid angiopathy is a cerebrovascular disease caused by the deposition of beta amyloid into cerebral vessels, which increases the risk of intracerebral hemorrhage. The use of anticoagulation further increases that risk of bleeding. Both atrial fibrillation and cerebral amyloid angiopathy are diseases which are prevalent in the elderly. As our population ages, clinicians commonly encounter the scenario of trying to balance the benefits and risks of anticoagulation in patients with both conditions. Traditionally, multiple risk scores have attempted to estimate the chances of both stroke and bleeding in patients with atrial fibrillation. The chads vas schemata is the most common clinically used risk score to approximate the risk of stroke in patients with atrial fibrillation who are not on anticoagulation. The Hasbled score is the most commonly used schemata to estimate the risk of bleeding while on anticoagulation. Our hypothesis was that patients with cerebral amyloid angiopathy would have worse outcomes compared to those without cerebral amyloid angiopathy, despite similar CHADS-VASC and HADS-BLED scores. We were fortunate to be able to use the Rochester Epidemiology Project database, which catalogs the medical records for all patients within Olmsted County and codifies their diagnoses. We queried that database for all patients older than 55 with diagnoses of non-traumatic intracerebral hemorrhage, atrial fibrillation, and anticoagulant use from 1995 to 2016. Ultimately, 65 patients were identified with a non-traumatic intracerebral hemorrhage while on anticoagulation for atrial fibrillation. Of those 65, 35 patients had evidence of possible or probable cerebral amyloid angiopathy based on imaging characteristics using the modified Boston criteria for CAA. Here, we see displayed the main findings of our study. In particular, the mean HASBLED score for patients with evidence of cerebral amyloid angiopathy was significantly lower than the mean HASBLED score for patients without cerebral amyloid angiopathy. Among patients who had cerebral amyloid angiopathy, the rate of recurrence of intracerebral hemorrhage was significantly higher than their HASBLED scores would have predicted. 1.9 occurrences per 100 patient years predicted versus an actual occurrence of 3.2 hemorrhages per 100 patient years. Further, all patients in our cohort who suffered a recurrent intracerebral hemorrhage had evidence of cerebral amyloid angiopathy and had HASBLED scores less than three. Taken together, these findings may suggest that the HASBLED score underestimates the risk of bleeding in patients with cerebral amyloid angiopathy. We posit that in patients with concomitant cerebral amyloid angiopathy and atrial fibrillation, future risk models that account for cerebral amyloid angiopathy may reduce morbidity. Further, they would help clinicians better weigh the risks and benefits of anticoagulation in this setting and allow for better patient counseling. Thank you very much for your time. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. 
There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel, or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.